الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين نبينا محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين فجزاكم الله خيرا على حسن حضوركم وحسن استماعكم وحسن نياتكم رب شرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وحل العقدة من لساني يفقه قولي This is the next segment that will be focused on ورب As the مصنف رحمة الله عليه said الكلام هو اللفظ المركب المفيد بالوضع وأقسامه ثلاثة اسم وفعل وحرف جاء لمعنى فالاسم يعرف بالخفض والتنوين ودخول الألف واللام وحروف الخفض وهي من وإلى وعن وعلى وفي That's where we stop. He also said ورب We will discuss إن شاء الله ورب May Allah give us tawfiq. Rubba is the next harfu khavd that we want to discuss. Rubba. And it has two meanings in the Arabic language, two main meanings. One of them, at-taqlilu and التكثير Both of those are opposites تقليل means unlikelihood It has the word in it You can probably see the word in it قليل Which means little تقليل here means it's unlikely Meaning the statement or sentence that follows Rubba is a statement that is unlikely to happen. Or it's because it is an unlikely circumstance. So Rubba is used. As well as Takfir. So the best way to translate Wallahu Alam Rubba is perhaps. To translate it to the word perhaps. أضرب لكم على ذلك أمثلة. Let's strike some examples for رب. رب رجل كريم قابلني. رب رجل كريم قابلني. رب is حرف خفض حرف خفض and as we learned in the last segment it's also referred to as خافض خافض رجل is مخفوض it is مخفوض and it is an اسم how do we know we know that Rajul is a ism because this is Tanween. In addition to it, it is Kasra. That's two. The third way you know that this word Rajulin is an ism because Rubba comes before it and has an effect on it. Rubba Rajulin. So that's Rubba is one. Kasra is one and Tanween is another. Those are three. Alamat. These are three signs to show us that Rajul is an Isan. Rubba Rajulin Kareemin. Now here, there is no Rubba in this place between Kareem and Rajul. But Kareem also has a Kasratan has a tanween here. Why is that? 
Well, that is because Kareem is describing Rajul. So Kareem is a description of Rajul. Rajul is Kareem. Not Rajul whose name is Kareem, but Rajul who is Kareem. Kareem means honorable, dignified, or charitable. Qabala ni. Qabala ni is two words. Excuse me, I went through the lamp. Qabala. Qabala is a verb, a fi'il. Means that someone were to meet you, but there's a mutual meeting between you and that person. And ni, the noon, is separating qabala and ya, which means this ya means me. This noon is also another word. And the ya is another word, referring to me, referring to ana. So you've noticed that rajulun is the origin of rajulin. It becomes rajulin because of rubba. Rubba. Also karimun is the origin of this ism. It becomes karimin because it is following rajul. It is a or it is an adjective, a description of karim. So it has to follow karim. Rubba rajulin karimin qabalani. Perhaps a generous man will meet me or run into me, or meet me, come across me. Perhaps a generous man will come across me. Now you might wonder why it is that this is for taqlil. And that's because, for the most part, people are not generous. Allah says, Inna al insana Mankind has been created with much despair in himself. Ida masahu sharru jazu'a. When he is touched by some difficulty or harm, he becomes impatient in despair. Ida masahu al khayru manu'a. And when he is touched with some good, meaning wealth, then he is extremely stingy. So that's the origin of mankind, that we are a stingy group of people, or a stingy creation. So that's why it's unlikely to run across a very generous person. Wallahu a'ala. And that's the next example. Mithalun akhar. رب أخ لك لم تلده أمك لم تلده أمك رب أخ لك لم تلده تعال هالسكون بكذا باللم لم تلده أمك رب إزدى حرف خفض أو خافض أخ إز بإسم مخفوض إسم مخفوض and you notice that you recognize that this is اسم مخفوض because of كسرة رب أخ لك This lamb is also a حرف خف but we didn't get to it yet comes a little later 
So this sentence has two huruf khafd. Rubba is one and la is one. Laka. Kaf here represents anta, you. Lam talidhu. Lam is another harf, another type of harf. It is not harfu khafd. It is called harfu jazm. Harfu jazm. I'm going to write that over here because it's going to come again later on. Harfu jazmin. Gim za mim. Jazm. Talidhu. The word talid is afi'il. Talid. Lam yalid wa lam yulad. Yalid and yulad in Surah Al Ikhlas are both af'al. Lam talidhu. Who here refers back to akh? Ummuka. Um, you all know. It means mother. Ka refers back to the same ka that was here. So this ka and this ka refers both of them to you. And yakhun is the origin of the affected makhfuz or ism makhfuz. It is the origin. This is akhun. As all of the asma begin with dhammatan, two dhammas. That's the origin of the asma. It becomes now akhin because of rubba. This means perhaps there is a brother. Or perhaps you have a brother. So laka means you have or for you. Perhaps you have a brother. Lam talidhu. Lam is a negation. It is negating the wilada of your mother to you or to him. Excuse me. Lam talidhu means was not birthed by your mother. You may have a brother who was not birthed by your mother. Meaning, basically, as we are in Islam, we are brothers. And we are brothers in faith. And all of those who share the same faith are actually brothers in that faith. But this is unlikely because how many people will actually have a real mother that his own mother did not birth. The only real way to have a real mother that that to share a brother or to have a brother that your mother has not birthed is by way of marriage. You know, you marry Excuse me, your father marries a woman who has a son. In addition to that, nursing parents, the mother who nurses another child, a child that is not her own. As you all know in the Sunnah of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. But how likely is it that you have a brother that your own mother has not birthed? It's not very likely. On the other hand, I would argue that this could be an example for a likely situation in regards to us being brothers in faith, sisters in faith. Wallahu a'lam. Another example. Rubba waladin kathubin sadaq. Rubba waladin kathubin sadaq. Rubba is harfu khadb. Waladin is makhfuz, ismun makhfuz, and you know that because of the tanween. Kathubin is describing, it is an adjective for waladin. It is describing walad, so it has to follow the same format, same significance or placement. And that placement is the tanween. On the end, but not just ten tanween, but kasratan. Kasratanween or kasratan. Sadaqa is a past tense verb. So it's 
So you see that walad, waladun becomes waladin because of rubba. And kathubun is the origin. It becomes kathubin because it follows walad. It is a, it is an adjective for walad. Rubba waladin kathubin sadaq means perhaps a child who is a perpetual liar may tell the truth. Perhaps a child who is a perpetual liar may tell the truth. As we recognize from the Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in his hadith when he talked to Abu Hurairah who saw a man stealing in Ramadan that man turned out to be shaitan and he told him that if he said ayatul kursi as you all know and as you all say before you go to sleep if he said ayatul kursi before he went to sleep he will be protected from the shayateen and so on Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said sadaqaka wa huwa kathub sadaqaka wa huwa kathub he has told you the truth, but he is a perpetual liar. He's addicted to lying. So, Rubba waladin kathubin sadaq. It may be that a perpetual lying child, a perpetually lying child, may tell the truth. May Allah make all of our children and ourselves truthful. مثال آخر another example رب مولود جديد ضحك رب مولود جديد ضحك رب is حرف خفض مولود is the اسم مخفوض is the اسم that is affected by حرف خفض or خافض the harf of khafid, as we remember, is referred to as khafid also. So the ism that follows the khafid is called makhfud. And the sign of it being makhfud is two kasras on the end. Apparent. Jadidin also is a, or is an adjective. An adjective for mawlood. It is describing Mawlood. So, since it is an adjective describing Mawlood, it must follow Mawlood in its tense. Dahika is like Sadaqa. They are both past tense verbs. Past tense fi'ls. What you call fi'lun maadhi. As we discussed before, fi'lun maadhi. We discussed briefly, but not in detail. So Mawludun is the origin of this particular ism as is all of the asma, all of the isms. Mawludun becomes Mawludin. And Jadidun becomes Jadidin because it is describing Mawlud. This means perhaps Perhaps a newly born child, Mawlud is a born. Child is not here, but Mawlud is understood that it's a child. Urubba Mawludin, Jadidin. Jadid is newly born, child. Dahik, laughs. Perhaps a newly born child may laugh. Allahu A'lam, the reason why this is taqleel, it's unlikely because babies cry a lot, especially when they're first born or sleep. But rarely do you see them laughing. They may smile, but I don't remember any of my babies laughing, uh, being infants, newborn babies. Wallahu A'lam. Mithal. Al-Mithal Al-Akhir, the last example, is where Rubba means takthir, likelihood, because Rubba can mean unlikely or likely. 
Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam said ya rubba kasiyatin fi dunya aariyatan yawm al qiyamah ya rubba kasiyatin fi dunya aariyatan yawm al qiyamah rubba is here ya is usually for calling out but it seems to be here to draw attention wallahu a'lam Rubba is our point. It is the harfu khafid or the khafid. Kasiyatin is makhfud because you see the kasratan there. Affected by rubba. Kasiyatin means a woman who is clothed. clothed. Perhaps a woman who is clothed. Fi dunya. Fi is another khafid or harfu khafid. And the makhfud is dunya. The ism makhfud is dunya. You might say, well, how is the ism makhfud dunya when there is no kasra here? It's dunya. Well, that's because kasra is impossible to be put here because of alif. Where are you going to put it? You're going to say dunya. Where are you going to put it? You cannot put it anywhere. That's why you do not see kasra. But this dunya is still makhfud because it follows fi. So it's, it's in the place of a makhfud, and it is makhfud itself, but you do not see it apparently because it's impossible to put the kasra on alif. Ariyatan, naked, a naked woman. Yawm al qiyama, yawm al qiyamati. This kasra is because this word qiyama is relative to yawm which we'll discuss later on it's called mudaf mudafun ilayhi mudafun ilayhi we'll discuss it later on inshallah this means perhaps a woman who is clothed in the dunya will be naked on the day of judgment Perhaps a woman who was clothed in a dunya may be naked on the Day of Judgment. And we all know that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said that all of us are risen from our graves unclothed. And wallahu alam, I did not look up the explanation of this hadith, so I don't know why necessarily it fits in takfir but i know generally speaking from the general teachings of rasulullah that everyone is raised on the day of judgment naked so a person who is clothed in this world will be risen naked anyway and that is likely that is the norm all of us will be clothed but let's make it homework for you the meaning of this is perhaps a clothed woman it may be a clothed woman, wallahu alam, or a clothed soul. In this dunya, will be naked on a day of judgment. Your homework is to figure out what is that about. Is that literal nakedness, or literal clothing he's talking about? What's he talking about? Figurative, spiritual. I want you to find that out and use this Arabic to study or use it as an excuse to get you in the door to study. The great guidance of your Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. This ends this segment. Wallahu taala alam. Sallam ala nabiyyina Muhammad. Rabbana zidna ilma.